So last week, the Cornhuskers had a thrilling overtime win over the Tulane Green Wave. And now we have another episode, which is going to be double recruiting, double around college football, double all that stuff. So let's just get right into it. Starting with the recruiting here in week six, the bye week, halfback Lewis Oliver was taken off the board. Ole Miss has a huge lead on him, and we weren't even putting points into him, so he is no longer on our recruiting board. We also added a few new guys to the board this week, recruits that have a sub-20% lock percentage. We've got athlete TJ Evans from Luca, Mississippi, uh, athlete Brent Rice from Ferguson, Missouri, athlete J.R. Carter from Columbia, South Carolina, and then halfback Tyron Mosley from Sacramento, California. We also added a quarterback in Maurice Barrett from Twinsburg, Ohio. We saw his skills and looked like he was fast enough to be an option QB. And as a balanced quarterback, definitely has a stronger arm than most scrambling guys. And I was actually right. We scouted him, saw that he's got good enough speed. He's got a good arm. So we're going to be adding him to our board. We're not going to put any points in, or we actually did. We did put some points into him. So he is on our board right now, Maurice Barrett. As far as the games that happened last week, we have Rutgers is still winless. They dropped one to Marshall. Maryland dominated Illinois. Kansas joins UTEP in the loss to an FCS school group. Uh, Pittsburgh, who was at one point a top 10 team, lost to Boston College. USC is having a brutal year. They are now 1-4 as they lose to the Cal Golden Bears. Northwestern is no longer undefeated. They ran into the buzzsaw that is the Michigan State Spartans, while Michigan, also a buzzsaw, absolutely destroyed winless Purdue. And then another team loses to an FCS school, the La Tech Bulldogs. They're too busy being a baseball school, playing at the Love Shack. Oklahoma remains undefeated as they hold off Iowa State in a big Big 12 matchup. The Arkansas State Red Wolves and the Sun Belt are actually undefeated 4-0 on the season. Battle of the winless teams, FSU finally gets their first win as Wake is now 0-5 on the year. And then we had a big SEC game as the Ole Miss Rebels take down Bama. As far as the top teams in the country go, the Sooners are still number one, and then 2-3-4 is the top three Big Ten teams in the Big Ten East. And then nobody fell out of the top 25 either. As far as the NCAA players of the week, you had Marshall cornerback Stephen Gilmore. Not that. Stephen Gilmore, the other one, with three picks against Gavin Wimsatt's Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And then you had Akron's QB with six total touchdowns in a throttling of the Western Michigan Broncos. And then you also had the Big Ten players of the week. They had an Illinois corner, and then you had C.J. Stroud, again, who had six passing touchdowns and a win over Arizona State. Now moving on to week seven with the recruiting. Unfortunately, our top recruit, our top guy on our board, offensive tackle Edward White, has committed to Ohio State. So we are unfortunately going to be missing out on that 86 run block, 85 impact block, as a freshman, and Ohio State, which does not need him at all, is going to be getting him. But, I mean, that's that's what we signed up for with this, with this dynasty. We're going to be competing with these Big Ten teams, and uh, we obviously would like to be able to get guys like that, but we lose out on Edward White. We also bumped up outside linebacker Bruce Hunter to 400 points because the Sooners are starting to make a run on him. And then we bumped both the cornerbacks we're going after in Glenn Madsen and Kyle Hollis up to 200. Maurice Barrett is up to 250 now, the quarterback. And then we also scouted that athlete we added to the board last week, Brent Rice, and discovered that he's got 90 speed and 90 throw power, an absolute cannon on uh, Brent Rice. But he's also got insane coverage ratings. So I don't know where he would play for us if we get him, but I want him bad. So we're going to put some points into him and see if we can get up uh, on his board. We're only putting 205 into him for now, but that is going to be going up as the weeks go along. And then since we also lost that on Edward White, we added uh, Corey Williams to our board. He is an offensive guard from Ohio who no one is going after. And he's actually unscouted an 80 overall Juco. So we'll see what he is scouted once we do eventually do that. 
Now, as far as the games that happened in week six, you have the Sooners, who are still number one in the country as they won last week over Iowa State, and now this week they won over Texas in the Red River rivalry. Indiana loses to North Texas, which is a big loss for them, obviously, losing to a not Power 5 school. Uh, important game of the Big 12, Iowa State beats Oklahoma State. Rutgers still winless, they lose to the Illini, and then Purdue also still winless, lost to our opponent this week, the Penn State Nittany Lions. Uh, Florida loses another game, this time to LSU. Uh, Arizona State, who is a top five team at one point, loses to a bad USC team. And then just a brutal stretch here for Northwestern as they were undefeated, but then in back-to-back -back weeks they face the buzzsaws that are Michigan State and Ohio State. And then we also have Boston College is now going to be ranked as they uh, stumped the Miami Hurricanes. So if we take a look at the top teams, still basically the same. And then you had Tennessee, Utah, and UCF all dropped out of the rankings. As far as the update on the Heisman uh, race, Tank Bigsby, Auburn's running back, is now the front runner. And then for the players of the week, you had... Uh, UAB outside linebacker who had two forced fumbles, and then you had Trevion Henderson who had a huge game against Northwestern, 100 yards on the ground and in the receiving game, so of course he's also Big Ten Player of the Week. And we take a look at the Big Ten standings, we are actually atop the Big Ten West at 3-1 and one on the season, while the Big Ten East has the three Giants atop there, all 5-0 and oh on the season. And as far as the game preview, we are playing Penn State this week. As I mentioned, they are, of course, the better team ratings-wise, as are every team that we come across in the uh, Big Ten, except for maybe like Northwestern or something. But for the most part, every team is better than us ratings-wise. Their QB is having a rough year, though, with only 8 TDs to 12 INTs. And then the good news for us is that Tyreek Johnson is actually going to be playing this week. He missed uh, most of last game as he got hurt in the first quarter. And then Isaac Gifford had to come in and make some plays, which he did. But Tyreek Johnson is now going to be back in the lineup for us. The Cornhuskers of Nebraska, leaders of the West Division in the Big Ten, travel to State College where the Nittany Lions look to end their winning streak. Penn State won the toss and elected to kick, so we'll start things off here with the Nebraska Cornhuskers on offense. Harburg scanning, going to the air in the first play of the game. He's going to find Johnson in the flats, who picks up a few yards. Sets up a second and three here for the Huskers. So a man in motion, Harburg running the option. He's going to keep it himself and go up the middle as the Duke of Nebraska picks up eight yards in a new set of downs. So now out of the pistol, Harburg rolling out to his right to avoid pressure, and he finds Justin Horton, the true freshman fullback, picks up eight yards in the receiving game, brings up a second and two here for Nebraska. Handoff Johnson, and he is going to be just barely getting the first down. So it's first and ten here now for the Huskers. Man motions in the backfield. It's David Wilson, and he's going to go up the middle on the handoff for seven yards. Sets up a third and three. Wilson in motion once again again. Same play essentially, but Harburg keeps it this time and he's going to pick up the first down with his legs as they get themselves a new set of downs inside Penn State territory now. Harburg option once again. He's going to pitch fine. Johnson gets it to the outside. He's got the first and more as he stiff arms a defender and finally wrapped up at about the 14 yard line. So new set of downs here. Harburg read option. He keeps has a block downfield and he's going to be tackled basically right at the goal line. So first and goal here upcoming. Handoff Johnson punches it up the gut and he's into the end zone as the Cornhuskers strike first in this ball game. They go up 7 to nothing here on Penn State as we'll pick things up on offense with Taquan Roberson and the Nittany Lions and their no huddle spread option or their spread offense not option. No huddle spread offense as Roberson's going to be taken down for a loss there by Raquan Buckley on the first play so brings up a second and 12 
valve here. Roberson pump fakes, and then he tucks it and goes before getting laid out over the middle of the field. So now third and nine after Roberson picks up a couple of yards, and he's going to try to go to his man, streaking down the sidelines, but instead it's going to be incomplete. So the Cornhuskers defense holds strong and gets the offense back with the ball here. So Harburg in the shotgun. He's going to go to the air here on third and eight, needing a conversion, going deep. And that's going to be picked off by Penn State. Ellis of the Nittany Lions defense reverses the fields. And now it's going to be Nittany Lions offense on the field. So Noah Kane gets the handoff there on first down, only gets one yard. Second and nine, now going to the air. Roberson finds Washington, and he's got nothing but green in front of him. A completely blown coverage there from the Huskers defense as Washington's going to find his way 85 yards to the house. And this game's going to be tied up at seven. So now back on offense here with the Huskers. Harburg running the read option, makes the wrong read there as Dominique Cronin's going to lose three yards, brings up a second and 13 here for the Huskers in the shotgun once again. Harburg immediate throw on the curl route to David Wilson, and they convert for the first down, 14 yards through the air. New set of downs here for the Huskers. Harburg running the option here, going left side. He's not going to pitch, but he does pick up the first down with his own leg, so they move the chains once again. We're into the second quarter now. Harburg option once again. This time it's a handoff to Brody Belt. And he's going to pick up six yards on the ground. Brings up a second and four. Harburg keeps, tries to kick it to the outside. And he's going to just barely not get the first down. So third and one as he somehow doesn't get the first down there. Hand off Johnson, but they get it on the very next play as he goes up the middle for seven. Gets more than he needs and moves the chains. Now inside Penn State territory up at the 30-yard line. Option once again. Harburg sheds a tackler, pitches the Cronin. He's got Green in front of him. Stiff arms a defender and drags him into the end zone. 28 yards to the promised land for Dominique Cronin. And the Huskers go back Back on top, 14 to 7. So 521 left here in the second quarter. Take one, Roberson and Noah Kane in the backfield for the Nittany Lions. As Kane's going to get the handoff there, hurdle Benjamin Cleveland is on the ground. And pick up nine on the ground, brings up a second and inches here. Handoff for Kane once again, dragged down by the horse collar, which is not a penalty in this game. And he does get the first down. So new set of downs here. Once again, another handoff for Noah Kane. And another first down for Kane as he's inside Nebraska territory now. So new set of downs here. Once again, right back to Kane. Shoves a man off him, and he's going to be able to pick up Eight yards on the ground there. Brings up a second and two here for the Nittany Lions. Roberson going to the air. Tucks it and keeps as nobody's open. And he's going to shed a tackler and stumble across the first down marker for the first down. But there's a penalty on the play. It's actually clipping on Penn State. So they now bring up a second and 12. It's going to be a designed QB run here for Roberson. And he's going to be dragged down from behind by Blaze Gunnarsson. So third and nine upcoming as they hurry it to the line. And he goes off on a run once again. Sheds a tackler, spins through one, and he's still going to be short of the first down marker. So fourth and five upcoming here for Penn State. And they punt it back to Nebraska, who have a third and four here. They're going to convert as Harburg gets the first down with his legs in the option. New set of downs, 124 left here in the first half. Harburg handoff Johnson trucks through a defender, and he's going to be wrapped up after picking up eight on the ground. Brings up a second and two. Huskers here in the pistol full house. Harburg option. He pitches to Johnson, who has a block from Wilson downfield. And he's going to get into Penn State territory. Wrapped up short of the 30-yard marker. So second and 11 now. A couple plays later. 37 seconds left here in the half. Harburg finds Johnson on the screen. He's got some blocks. And he's going to get himself inside the red zone. Gets tackled at about the 15-yard line. So 30 seconds now left in the first half. Harburg going to the air in the play action, rolling out to his right to avoid pressure, and he cannot get the pass off. He is sacked. Brings up a second and 17. No timeouts for the Huskers here as Harburg swings that to the flats for David Wilson. He is popped for three yards. Third and 15. They hurry to the line here. Once again, don't know how to spike the ball. I'm pretty sure it was circle, but it wasn't. But it doesn't matter because Harburg's going to the air, and David Wilson has it. 
gets two feet inbounds. And Harburg has a passing touchdown. The Duke of Nebraska makes it 21-7 for the Huskers heading into halftime as now Penn State gets the ball here in the second half. So Roberson on the QB keeper here on the read option. He's going to go up the middle for eight yards. Sets up a second and two here for the Nittany Lions. So Roberson going to the air now. He's going to find his man on the curl, basically floats it to him and just barely ends up getting the first down because he went backwards after catching it. So now Roberson going back to the ground game here on the read option, picks up five on the ground, second and five upcoming as they hurry up to the line. Roberson going to the air. He's scanning. He's got a man on the sidelines. It's Daniel George. 21 yards, they convert. Now inside Nebraska territory, Roberson keeps on the read option. He's going to stiff arm Reimer and finally get dragged down about the 20 yard line. They hurry it to the line for a new set of downs here. Going to the passing game and Roberson's going to shed one tackler, but not the second. Sacked by the Huskers defense. I believe that was Blaze Gunnarsson who got to him. So six minutes left here in the third. Roberson finds Johnson, who is immediately... Tackled by Luke Reimer, so third and ten now here for Penn State. Roberson going to the air. He's trying to find a man open. He does. Lambert Smith makes the catch, but he runs out of bounds immediately. Well short of the first down marker, so they bring out the kicking team. Knock that down, make it a 21-10 game here as Nebraska picks things back up on offense. Harburg running the option, makes the pitch to Cronin, and he's going to pick up a first down as he runs directly through a defender and gets them a new set of downs. So now it's first and 10 once again. Harburg running the veer, makes the wrong read as he's going to lose five yards on that play. Second and 15 now out of a heavy set. Harburg dropping back, and he can't get the pass off as he is sacked for a lost third and a very long 25 upcoming here for Nebraska. Harburg looking to try to find something here, rolling out to his right, and he's just going to tuck it and keep it, but he's not going to be able to get the first down, obviously, so he runs out of bounds. There's also a flag on the play. It's clipping, so... Basically nothing going for Nebraska there, so they're going to punt it to Penn State, who takes over back on offense. Take one, Robertson, or Roberson gets sacked for a loss of three there. That's Brian Rush, the freshman defensive end, coming up with the big play on first stand. So second and 13 here, Roberson going to run it once again. This time he's going to shed a tackler and then be dragged down from behind by Buckley. Brings up a third and five here for the Nittany Lions. Roberson all the time in the world, and he's going to find Noah Kane in the open field, picks up a first down, and is tackled at about midfield. So third and ten upcoming now as they hurry to the line a few plays later. So Roberson, once again, a bunch of time in the pocket, going to the end zone, and that's going to be batted down, almost picked. Brings up a fourth and ten. They are well out of field goal range. So the Huskers back on offense after the Penn State punt. It's second and three. Handoff Cronin sheds a tackler and picks up more than he needs. New set of downs for the Huskers. Inside the two-minute mark here in the third quarter, Cronin motions in the backfield. It's an option. Harburg gets around his own lineman there and then sheds a tackler, and he gets pushed forward for the first down of Harburg. Picks up 11 yards on a new set of downs for the Huskers. So now handoff Johnson up the middle. He gets seven, brings up a second and three here for Nebraska. Now at about the one-minute mark, handoff Cronin, and he's going to lose a couple. So third and five there is a big play from Curtis Jacobs with the Penn State defense. So third and five, option, Harburg pitches, and somehow that's going to get pitched forward. It bounces off a Penn State defender, and it's recovered by the freshman fullback Justin Horton as the Huskers keep their offense on the field, and Ramir Johnson is going to get them the first down. 12 yards up the middle, only needed inches and now we are into the fourth quarter as Cronin motions in the backfield. It's going to be a play action, and Harburg is sacked. 
Curtis Jacobs making a play once again for the Penn State defense. Second and 14 now as Harburg makes the pitch, and it is a disaster as that goes for a big loss of 14 yards as there was nobody there to receive the pitch, and David Wilson has to jump on it. Third and 28 now. They're going to try to get some yards here out of the screen. So third and 28, Johnson gets the screen, gets 14. They're going to try to go for the field goal, and it's going to be wide left, possibly had enough distance but it was going to be very close as we take another look at this one obviously wide left could have possibly been a, maybe not but anyways it's a miss nonetheless so still 21 10 Penn State now on offense handoff Noah Kane up the middle and he's going to be dragged down finally just before the first down marker second and inches here as Roberson going to the air, he's got a man wide open on the corner. It's Lambert Smith, and then finally taken down by Nick Roth in the open field. So new set of downs here, 6-13 left in the game. Roberson immediately sacked. Nick Roth making a play in the backfield. So it's a second and 17. Now here for Penn State as Roberson running the option. He keeps it. Going to go left side and then be taken down by, I believe that was Rodgers. So third and nine upcoming now. Roberson going to the air once again. It's a screen. He's got Kevon Lee, and he's going to be taken down or pushed out of bounds, rather, by Luke Reimer, short of the first down marker. They keep the offense on the field here on fourth and two. Roberson going to the air. He's scanning. Got some time. Finds Kane. And he is going to be just barely enough to get the first down. So first and goal here for the Nittany Lions. Roberson over the middle has George. They move it up six more yards. Second and goal now basically right on the goal line. Roberson. QB keeper on the read option gets into the end zone as Penn State gets some more points on the board. And we've got ourselves a 21-16 ball game as they're going to keep the offense out to try to go for two here. And Roberson at the very last second finds Keandre Lambert-Smith for the two-point conversion. So it's 21-18 here, 4.53 left as the Huskers take over on offense. Ramir Johnson gets seven yards up the middle, makes it a second and three here. Now Harburg handoff Johnson once again. He breaks free, and he's going to be into Nebraska territory, wrapped up at about like the 48-yard line there. And now it's going to be a loss here on the first end as Harburg has taken down in the backfield. So second and 13 upcoming here, running the option once again, handoff Cronin up the middle, picks up five, sets up a more manageable third and eight here for Nebraska. So Harbor going to the air, immediately swings it to Carney in the flat. So he's going to be stopped just barely short of the first down marker, but the Huskers keep the offense out on the field. And who else but Ramir Johnson goes up the middle and gets them way more than they need. So new set of downs here. About, now about two minutes left here in the game. Harburg in the pistol. Handoff Brody Belt. He's going to block down field and he is into the end zone. Brody Belt 16 yards in the ground game to the end zone as it's now a 28-18 lead here for the Cornhuskers. 2-0-1 left. Penn State needs a score, obviously. They're down multiple scores. They're down 10. And then Roberson's going to find Strange here for 18 yards on a new set of downs. Now inside the two-minute mark on second and four, Roberson almost sacked. Pass is going to be dumped off to nobody, so third and four upcoming here for Penn State. Roberson and the team need a conversion. So all the time in the world, pressure pressure's not going to get to him. And it's completely blown coverage from the Huskers as Lambert Smith 51 yards to the end zone. And it's back to being a three-point game. So 28-25 and Penn State going for the onside kick. And they get it somehow bounces off multiple Nebraska hands and now Penn State right back in the thick of it have a chance to win down by three here at the ball the minute 40 left 
Roberson spins out of that Reimer tackle, and he's going to pick up a first down with his legs before finally being taken down by Tyreek Johnson. 134 left. Roberson going to the air. Here he's sacked by Brian Rush. The freshman DN gets to him. Brings. I think that was actually uh, Blaze Gunnerson, I believe. But anyway, second and 18 now. Roberson tripped up, and he is sacked again. They actually rule that as a uh, no-gain rush, apparently. So third and 17. Roberson going to the air, of course. He's going to get it just barely to his man Johnson as they convert on third and 17. Brutal for the Huskers' defense there. Inside 50 seconds here as Roberson finds Lambert Smith immediately tackled. They have one time that still brings up a second and nine. They spike the ball. So third and nine upcoming here. 32 seconds left in the game. Roberson dropping back. Trying to go to the end zone here, and he's going to be sacked by Ty Robinson. Comes up big, brings up a fourth and 14. This is going to be the send it to overtime, and they do just that as Penn State somehow ends up tying this game at 28, and we are going to extra time in this one. So overtime, and it's going to be Penn State getting the ball first in OT as Nebraska won the toss and elected to go for defense first. So Noah Kane gets the first handoff of OT, gets three yards up the middle, second and 17. Roberson, QB designed run here, and he's going to be dragged down short of the marker. So third and four upcoming. They obviously need a conversion. Roberson going to the air. He's got time in the pocket, but then at the that last second, I believe that was Robinson broke through and gets to him, and that pass is going to fall incomplete. So Penn State is going to have to settle for a field goal on their opening possession of OT. And now the Cornhuskers, all they need is a field goal to extend it or a touchdown to win it. So hand off Wilson here. There's no rush. Just got to keep moving the ball down the field. Easy five yards there on the handoff to Wilson. Second and five now. Hand off Cronin. That's a new set of downs. So first and 10 upcoming here for the Huskers. Harburg, Cronin, and Johnson in the backfield. It's going to be Johnson getting the ball here, and he's going to pick up an easy six up the middle. Brings up a second and four. Harburg now handoff Cronin, jukes out a man, stumbles through, and he's going to be tackled short. Brings up a third and two here for the Huskers. Now it's a handoff. Johnson goes to the right side, and he's going to be popped, but he picks up the first down, so first and goal here for Nebraska. Harburg handoff. Cronin up the middle, and he's into the end zone as the Cornhuskers walk it off. They hold on and beat the Penn State Nittany Lions here in State College by a score of 31 or 34 to 31 as Penn State just stormed back and got that lucky onside kick to force OT, but Nebraska does end up getting the W in this one as they extend their winning streak. And of course, it is another run-dominant game for the Huskers' option offense. Totally dominated possession as well. 21 minutes and 35 seconds of possession compared to Penn State's no-huddle offense with a measly 10 minutes and 25 seconds. While we had Vermeer Johnson, 20 carries, 170 yards and a touchdown. Dominique Cronin had 14 carries of his own, 82 yards and two touchdowns. And now the Huskers look forward to next week as they will be heading back home to play host to one of the giants of the Big Ten East in the Ohio State Buckeyes. So with that being said, it's going to wrap things up here for this edition of the Nebraska Cornhuskers Dynasty here on College Football Revamped. I've been your host, Jerseyborn, and I am saying, let's go Peacocks, baby.